This time I won't go into cables because comparing C1200 and C1500, which we have right here, so this is NZXT C1500 Platinum, and uh, yeah, it's a new model as well, but I'm not going to discuss the cables because I'm just going to go quickly through them. They are flexible at the end, but you have this uh, rubber band that holds the cables together, and then you have this, well, I would say some sort of a sleeve, let's put it this way. But regardless of that, same thing as the C1200, we have it the same way on the C1500, and of course the specific power plug that needs to go to your power supply. So I'm just going to, yeah, remove these and start discussing the power supply. So as you might have noticed, it is a bit bigger than we had like regular 12, 000, 1200 watts power supply and in general stuff, stuff like that but what this power supply has is 15,000 watts we have loads of connections and two 12v 2 times 6 pin connectors right here and we're gonna go through that uh, at the back we have of course the power connector for that insane tech uh, connector um, on off switch and of course we have an on off switch for zero rpm so what's it all about with this power supply and just like to point out this is an overview just going to go through the details so you know this thing also exists as well as the uh, c1200 and yeah basically that's it so what we have right here is some sort of a future proof power supply which is designed with atx 3.1 and pcie 5.1 compliance to be able to work with the new generation of GPUs, then we have dual PCI 5.1 connectors, which includes two 16-pin 12V 2x6 uh, PCI 5.1 cables, which are delivering over, apparently over, 600 watts for those uh, RTX cards. And then we have um, the digital power that enables precise voltage regulations, uh, resulting in higher efficiency and lower ripple noise. Uh, efficiency is 80 plus platinum which is 94% uh, efficiency which re reduces power consumption now we have magnetic levitation fan now this is quite interesting 140 millimeter magnetic levitation fan which uses air suspended blades for lower noise high airflow and a long lifespan i think they should use these for their aios and uh, case fans without a doubt then we go with some specifications. The, these were just the features. So the dimensions are 150 times 86 times 180. So as you know, we almost every time had 150 to 160. Now we have 180 millimeters of length. Uh, still PCB and plastic, ATX 12 volts uh, V3.1 and the EPS 12 volts uh, V2.92. Uh, we have active uh, PFC at 0.99. Then protections, we have over voltage and under voltage protection, short circuit protection, over temperature, power and current protection as well. At 10% load, we have 92% at 150 VAC, 20% uh, load uh, 94, 50% load 93.8 and 100% load 90.8%. Fan specs, what we have right here, 140 times 140 times 25, uh, speed is uh, 2500 RPMs plus minus 10% with airflow 125 CFM. Honestly, this is insane. And then we have noise level at 41 decibels. This is at the maximum speed. And believe me, I don't think it needs to spin with this type of airflow. It doesn't need to speed, uh, spin at 100%. And as I stated, magnetic levitation bearing. Uh, mean time before failure, 100,000 hours. Temperature from 0 to 50 degrees. And interesting with the warranty is 10 years. Now, when we go with the cables and what you get included, we have one 8-pin CPU cable. Then we have one 8-pin, which is 4 plus 4 CPU cable. That's uh, EPS. Then we have six 8-pin or 6 plus 2 PCI cables. Uh, two 16-pin uh, 12 uh, plus 4 PCIe 12 2 times 6 cable. We have one 24-pin 20 plus 4. We have three SATA cables, which on each you have four SATA connectors. And we have one peripheral cable, which is four Molex uh, connectors uh, at the end. As I stated for the C1200, I'm going to say the same thing for the C1500. What we get here is a cool design. And I know, again, we're talking about the power supply in 99% of the scenarios when you're building a PC, unless it's an open air chassis, uh, you don't see your power supply. But regardless of that, NZXT is continuing with their minimalistic look and design. And this is how it continues with 
quite subtle uh, lettering with the NZXT C1500, the same thing on the other side. We have a bit grayish grill here, which is possibly to remove. There's no restrictions. So this gives you an option to remove this panel open up the fan access and clean up the dust if it eventually uh, accumulates or builds up. Right here, what I said, we have the connector for the motherboard, so 20 plus 4 pin. Then we have 8 8 pin connectors for the CPU and the PCI Express. Then we have 4 for the peripheral and SATA and uh, those two 12V 2TEM6. In general, quite simple. It is a bit heavy, but logically it's 1500 watts and uh, you can't expect anything uh, uh, else uh, than that. In general, what I can say is their power supplies are quite solid, minimalistic look, and the only thing that needs to be improved in general for their power supply is the cables. Because if you take a look, some other brands, what they do is they, it doesn't have to be fully braided in those terms. They have some type of sleevage on the cables and they get cable combs as well. And you don't have to buy cable extensions, even though I do in 95% of the scenarios use cable mode extensions. But in general, if you go with this type of power supply, why not just acquire uh, nice, at least flat cables? They'll look quite nice. So in those terms, if you go with a full NZXT build or ecosystem or something like that, it would be quite logical in some sense if you just have that OCD to have everything from one brand to go with their power supply and as I stated you've seen that build that I did with the NZXT H7 Flow RGB with the Kraken Elite 360 RGB and then I placed the NZXT C1500 it all came quite nice even though that specific build didn't even need to have 1500 watts but as I stated earlier I also like to have everything when I do my builds, everything from a single brand because it kind of just unifies it. And if you're in the same boat as I am, you might consider doing that as well. 1500 watts is a bit an overkill, but I would say at some point there is no such thing as overkill. So yeah, uh, in general, you could go with this one if you're really going with something high end or you're just pumping those power hungry GPU with spikes, CPU that is, I don't know, extreme and similar stuff or just running two GPUs that actually need 12V 2x6 uh, cable. That's all that I can say for today. Uh, it was specifically an overview because I wanted to give you an idea that this uh, monstrous power supply from NZXT exists and uh, give you some ideas even though you saw, you might have seen it on that H7 Flow RGB and you can check that video right after this one because I'll link it at the back. So when I finish the final words, thank you for watching today's video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell and check that other video for the H7 Flow RGB because that case is really good. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.